Thank you for attending our presentation on feminist new materialisms and what they might offer for the practices of participatory design. Before starting, I want to shortly position myself. So I'm presenting our paper from Oulu, which is in the northern part of Finland. And being here, I'm reminded by the Sami people living in the Arctic region and also of the silence that still remains around their history and presence here. So I wish to acknowledge the Sami people and extend that acknowledgement to all First Nations members and to the diverse knowledges Indigenous people and communities hold, also in relation to the ontological thinking we address here in this paper. The paper I'm presenting stems from our contemplations with Helena Karasti from over the past years. The starting point could be captured as a sense of bewilderment and generative trouble we've encountered. So about 10 years ago, we were doing a participatory design project with professionals working around workplace harassment interventions. I came to this project with this kind of vision that certainly a phenomena like harassment and intervening in it is a shared matter of concern and it would be relatively easy to get people together to learn from each other around it. And in a way it was. But when doing the designing and engaging with some of these professionals, I also noticed the complexity of the issue and the diverse experiences that seemed to swarm the spaces of our encounters when we met. So there was this sense that there is more going on than what we expected and anticipated. And then later, I got to become involved in creative research activism to explore gender and sexual harassment in preteen peer cultures. This research was based on the understanding that with phenomena this sensitive, silenced and normalized as harassment in children's lives is, the methods we are used to use may fail to enable space for those layers of experience that are difficult to articulate. So this project was about experimenting with new creative ways of engaging children in exploring what matters to them and what they would like to see change. For me, both these examples are about working with or engaging with complexity and sensitivity. And they both have informed my and our quest to articulate what does it mean to engage responsibly and accountably with this complexity and sensitivity? And what does it mean to create space for things to matter? These contemplations are something we see being increasingly explored and brought forward also in participatory design. So there is this effort to generate alternative, more expansive and welcoming and centrally more responsible and accountable ways of both understanding the world and doing participatory design as part of it. And informing and inspiring this work is a shift to emphasize relationality and interdependency, processuality and becoming, as well as non-human and the more than human. And these are the discussions we want to join. So what we want to do is to give a glimpse into our work where attention to relationality and becoming, in our case, inspired particularly by feminist new materialisms, has helped us find ways to grapple with the unanticipated, unexpected and the as yet articulated so that we could make meaningful impact. These things we are discussing have multiple touch points with BD because the question of socio-material relationality, non-human and becoming are not new. The idea of complex socio-technical and socio-material systems has been an important part of how BD processes and practices and the objects of design have been understood. Since the mid 90s, more specific articulations have emerged. The notion of infrastructuring has drawn attention to multi-temporality and processual dimensions in BD and Design Things has looked at socio-material assemblies and the role non-human actors play in co-constituting things and issues. And now just in the span of a few years, notions such as becoming with, responsibility, entanglement, affect more than human have come about. And these are drawing explicitly, for example, from post-humanist and new materialist philosophies, feminist technosciences and indigenous cosmologies. So there is definitely a growing momentum around these issues, even though it has remained thus far of interest to only a rather small group of scholars in BD. Our entry point to adding to these discussions is informed by our backgrounds in participatory design, science and technology studies, but also educational research and feminist and gender studies. 
Particularly, we are drawing inspiration from developments in the field of feminist post-human and new materialist educational research. So with feminist new materialisms, we refer to a transdisciplinary body of work rooted in feminist post-structural, post-colonial and intersectional and queer theories and employing materialist and relational ontologies of becoming to disrupt dominant humanist and anthropocentric modes of knowledge making. So this work is influenced by a range of thinkings and thinkers of which we have highlighted here those who have influenced our thinking the most. And what these thinkings have taught us is for one that the central referent to reality are interactive entanglements of human and non-human bodies, discourses and materiality. So this is about the mutual co-constitution of never separate entities and about the inventive capacity in this interactive dynamism. So that there is a possibility for what else and not yet and more than embedded in these entanglements. Another thing these thinkings remind us is that it's an ethical matter to be part of those interactions. And this is what Parad and Haraway capture with the notion of responsibility. So as researchers, through our choices of methods, interests, concepts, histories and many other things, we partake in some things coming to matter more than others. And that makes us responsible and accountable in very specific, situated and material ways. In the field of educational feminist new materialist research, this thinking has given rise to responsible research and praxis, which strives to put this idea of posthuman ethics to work by continuously unpicking what is our ability to respond and how to use that to enable the response of the other. So we want to slow down with these two ideas of engaging with the potentiality towards what else and not yet, and the challenge to unpick our ability to respond, to make our practices matter. And we want to bring them into dialogue with participatory design. To do so, we draw insights from the two participatory design and research engagements that we started with. Our work revolving workplace harassment interventions was part of a wider research project on the uses of social media in professional communities from early 2010s. The creative research activism with children in turn is an ongoing project and work of a fire research collective, which is focused on exploring and addressing harassment in preteen peer relations using feminist new materialist inspired arts based approaches. So drawing insights from these two examples, we built three propositions of how feminist new materialist praxis could be put to work in the practices of participatory design in how we set up our encounters, respond during our engagements and how we understand our responsibilities and accountabilities as designers and researchers. I will open up a bit what we mean by these three propositions with some examples from mainly the creative research activism with children. So our first proposition is setting up for inventiveness. This is about intentionally designing and devising for the unarticulated and the unanticipated. As said, our work has brought us to engage with phenomena that are sensitive, little addressed and often normalized and silenced, such as gender and sexual harassment in children's everyday lives. So to address it has required approaches that go beyond that which is already known and easily articulated. So in the example from work with children, feminist new materialist praxis has meant that in the setup of the workshops, in addition to engaging with the children, we engage with more than human relationality, with the inventive capacity of these interactive entanglements. And this is visible in the careful and purposeful design of the space and its materiality, iterations of activities, the rhythm of making an effective atmosphere captured in some of the pictures from the workshops here. The aim has been not to find out things based on preconceived ideas, but about intentionally setting up for inventiveness so that we enable exploration of the not yet and what else there may be with the motivation of imagining alternative, affirmative ways of knowing and being. This setting up for inventiveness then leads to the second proposition of how feminist new materialisms might inform our practices. And this is about responsiveness with that which emerges. Every time we invite participants along, whether professionals wanting to better their practices of intervention or children exploring what feels good or hurtful in their relationships, experiences, thoughts, 
hopes and concerns emerged that in a way overspilled the aims of our projects. And as said, we even intentionally set up for the emergence in ways that enables the unexpected and the unanticipated so that we could be open to more expansive ways of thinking and knowing. What feminist new materialist praxis and the idea of responsibility reminds us here is the importance of paying attention to and noticing this emergent nature of our encounters. It also reminds us of the need to be responsive with it, or what we might talk of as moving with it. So moving with entirely new matters of concern that emerge during the processes. And this requires that we think beyond our projects and preset aims. For example, our work with professionals working around harassment interventions ended up involving only part of those who were initially imagined as participants because something we hadn't expected had come up and it was allowed to reframe the process. In our paper, we also share examples from the creative research activism with children on how even individual encounters during workshops can be tapped into and moved with and how doing so can help make the experiences children share matter in the form of, for example, pedagogical practices for teachers or activism to evoke response from the wider public. The underpinning idea here is that because we can't know beforehand what matters, we need to be responsive with that which emerges. And finally, the third proposition we make is that feminist new materialisms can enrich the ways we understand researcher designers' responsibilities and accountabilities. Normative ethics and responsibility as a matter of equality and democratization of design are already deep seated in PD and they are significant. Feminist new materialisms prompt us to think what all or what else we are entangled with through our practices and how. This is a speculative practice of mapping our multiscalar and material entanglements, for example, with the phenomena we study. In our case, with the seriousness of harassment, the sensitivity and vulnerability in sharing experiences and the significance of bringing about change in abusive practices. It might also help us notice seemingly mundane parts of our practices, such as post-it notes or craft materials and glitter that tie us to waste and consumption, and also how when writing and citing, we are always inevitably entangled in particular epistemic inclusions and exclusions. So to think with Barad and Haraway, our responsibilities and accountabilities are not bound to doing the right thing, and they are not once and for all, but rather require that we continuously unpick and unpack how we could use our ability to respond to enable the response of the other. To draw this into conclusion, the generative trouble of our experiences and the company of feminist new materials, theories and thinkings has brought us to the three propositions a form of responsible BD, if you will, which, in addition to engaging with user participants and employing tools and techniques to forge what they know, engages with the more than human relationality to enable the not yet and what else to emerge. In addition to working with our design agenda, it notices and pays attention to and becomes responsive beyond preset expectations, roles and intentions, because that what else we then give space to might be vital for making our practices and processes really matter. And in addition to ticking the boxes of normative ethics, treading carefully and committing to democratic visions, it also acknowledges that our responsibilities and accountabilities extend across contexts and times and committedly asks what else, what next, so that it could be more than. As a final note, as we mentioned already earlier, what we propose has multiple touch points with what BD is. So our starting point for writing our paper and what we want to close with is the promise of and, which is not about us sharing our account to make claims or replacing something that is already there, but about joining and expanding and participating in creating a space where also we and our thinking can be enriched and enabled to become otherwise. So with that, we want to thank you for your attention and really look forward to questions, comments and discussions.